Hey there, how's your English studying going recently? I have another listening comprehension exercise for you. This time the setting is a funny story happening in a salon. To start with, which of these can you hear in the listening section? Don't look at those subtitles and give it a try. You know she's been on about changing her hair for a while. She wanted a fringe, right? Well, she called me this morning. Her voice was all shaky, so I knew something wasn't right. She said that she'd just been, and the guy that did it made a complete mess of it. Knowing her, she probably did a terrible job of explaining what she wanted. I shouldn't laugh, but oh my god, when she was telling me, I could just imagine her sobbing in the chair. It gets better. She complained to the manager and even said that he's bald, so what's he doing working in a salon? She's lucky that someone else put up with her and fixed it. Okay, she said to put up with her. Let's look at that and everything else that was said in a moment. First, pause the video if you want to look at these questions we will go through at the end. Let's begin. She said, you know she's been on about changing her hair for a while. She wanted a fringe, right? Fringe like bangs, this bit, this hairstyle. Well, she called me this morning. Her voice was all shaky, so I knew something wasn't right. So she called, my idea of shaky is, oh, can you believe what just happened? Like that, a shaky voice. She said that she'd just been, she didn't say where she'd been. She cut out a bit here. She said that she'd just been to the salon because right here it says changing her hair, wanting a fringe, we can assume, okay, she's been to the salon. And the guy that did it, the hairstylist, made a complete mess of it. To make a complete mess of something means to do a terrible job or a failed attempt. I tried to wax the car, but sorry, I made a complete mess of it. There's a few variations here, a total mess, an absolute mess, a complete mess of something, or to just mess something up. So it sounds like this wasn't a very good hairstylist, but then she says, knowing her, the friend she's talking about, she probably did a terrible job of explaining what she wanted. So now she's kind of flipped this over and said, actually, it's probably the friend's fault. Because knowing someone, knowing him, knowing her, knowing name, it's used to guess what someone probably did or will do. Knowing Aaron, he probably won't reply. Or knowing him, he'll be able to fix it. So it could be used in a negative or in a positive way. You can also say, if I know Aaron, then he probably won't reply. So knowing this friend, she probably did a terrible job of explaining what she wanted. So the friend didn't say this, she's guessing, well, we know her. It was probably her fault somehow. Second page, hydration. Second page, I shouldn't laugh, but oh my God, when she was telling me, I could just imagine her sobbing in the chair, sobbing, crying, being in tears. So she said, I could just imagine, used for a likely situation. Yeah, I believe that could happen. I could picture it, I could see it. She was so upset, I could just imagine her walking out and slamming the door. It didn't really happen, but it could have happened. So the friend didn't call her saying, I'm crying in the chair but she's saying that's what she could imagine happening. It gets better, the story gets better, not the haircut. She complains to the manager and even said that, and then she's quoting her, he's bald, so what's he doing working in a salon? So this hairstylist has no hair. She's saying, why is he working here? He has no hair. That is a very rude comment to make about someone and it's, completely inappropriate. The person speaking is saying she's finding it funny, but she's not saying, she's not agreeing that that was a good thing to say. Cause then she says, she's lucky that someone else put up with her and fixed it. So this was in the warm up question. Putting up with her means to deal with someone, even though they're having negative traits or negative actions. I don't know why everyone puts up with the new boss. Be careful not to confuse it with to put someone up, which means to let them stay overnight. She's lucky that someone else put up with her, with her complaining that was totally inappropriate and fixed it, fixed her hair. All right, let's come back to the comprehension questions. 
Who does the speaker think is to blame for the bad haircut? Well, the friend is saying that it was the guy that did it, but this person speaking says, well, knowing her, she probably did a terrible job of explaining what she wanted. It was her friend's fault. At least that's what she thinks. What does the speaker think the salon staff should have done instead? Well, she said she's lucky someone else put up with her and fixed it. Saying that she's lucky kind of gives me the impression that she's surprised the staff fixed it. So even though she didn't say this, my answer would be not offering to help or even asking the friend to leave. That's maybe what they should have done instead. So the last one, why did the speaker say they shouldn't laugh? She said, I shouldn't laugh, but oh my God, and continued. Well, at the beginning, she said her voice was all shaky. So the friend's clearly very upset about this. She thinks, yeah, my friend was making a fool of herself. It was her own fault, but you know, it's still her friend. So that's probably why she said I shouldn't laugh because she's very upset. Maybe we should take this a bit more seriously. If you want to take your English seriously or more seriously, what's better than doing one study video?